up on our next segment, we're going to take a look at a grassroots effort in Mountain View to raise the minimum wage there. And, in, and to introduce this, we have a, a short video clip here of a rally that was put on um, earlier this spring in front of Mountain View City Hall, organized by one of uh, both of our guests that are coming up. And you might um, recognize the uh, speaker at the rally in, in this clip. Let's go ahead and roll that clip. But while we're talking about raises and inequality, I want to show you what's happened to average income in this country in the past 30, 35 years. And uh, uh, this is a little bit of a demonstration project, so I'm going to need some volunteers from the, uh, uh, the audience here. So first I need someone to be the bottom 20% of the economic ladder. Can, can somebody come up here? So if you'll hold this up. This little line represents, for the bottom 20% over the last 30 years, their average annual income has increased by about 11%. So that's, that's the bottom 20%. Okay? So let's go to the next uh, batch of 20%, the 21 to 40 percentile. Okay. Okay, so the next, the next measure, the next 20 percentile, the, in the 21 to 40 percent, right. they got an 18 percent increase over the past 30, 35 years. Now we'll go to the next level. This is starting to get into, into middle class. So, okay, so this is, uh, <laughs> this is 41 to 60 percent. Go ahead. Welcome to the middle class. Now the middle class, roughly at the 60 percentile, they got a 21 percent increase over the last 30 years. Average annual income. Okay? Now we go, started to get into the upper classes, the 80th percentile. So if you'll hold up the 80th percentile there. So the 80th percentile got a 32 percent increase over the last 30 years. Okay? Now we're going to go not quite to the top, we're going to go up to the 99th percentile. And you might actually need somebody else with you there. You will need help. <laughs> top, 99, top 99, up to the 99th percentile, they got a 35% increase in the last 30 years, average annual income. And now we're going to go to the top 1%. And we're definitely going to need two people for this. This is the top 1%. increased 256% in the last 30 years. And ladies and gentlemen, that is inequality. And I would ask you to look at this not as just income levels, but as political power levels. And that's the inequality that we're talking about. Political inequality derives out of economic inequality. And that's why the struggle for a minimum wage is such a critical part of the struggle against economic and political inequality in this country. When we fight for a minimum wage, we are fighting for equality. When we fight for a minimum wage increase, we are fighting, quite literally, for democracy. Okay, and that was a rally at Mountain View organized by my next two guests here on Other Voices. Um, who are heading up or helping with this uh, minimum wage campaign. At the far end is Josh Wolf, also returning to this program, and Megan Fraley, also returning to this program. Thank you uh, both for coming back. Um, that was a fun rally to speak at. I was uh, glad you invited me. Uh, the 1% got a 256% uh, increase in their average annual income in the last 10, 20 years. Are you going for 256% in Mountain View? <laughs> Well, we'd certainly like to try. I think yes. We're, we're a little constrained <laughs> um, by some political realities, but we, we've seen real widespread interest in, in a pretty substantial increase in the minimum wage from, from people we've been talking to throughout this campaign. Uh -huh. So tell us a little bit about the campaign. This really is coming from the grassroots, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so what we've, we have a coalition at this point, so Peninsula Peace and Justice Center yeah. is part of that coalition. 
Uh, we have, I don't want to forget anyone, but we have Mountain View Day Workers Center, Santa Clara Green Party, Peninsula Young Democrats, Fool's Mission, um, who else is in Working our, partnerships. Working partnerships, our Walmart, for sure. Uh -huh. um, so this is definitely, people of Mountain View want this community to stay diverse, to be cutting edge, not only in terms of all the technology we're producing, but to be cutting edge in term, not even cutting edge. We want to go back to 19, if we were to go back to 1968, the wage today would be $10.77 an hour. So we're not even really talking cutting edge when we say we want the wage to be at least 10.15, uh -huh. which is what we're calling for, for it to be at least 10.15, which is what it is in San Jose. Okay. What is it now? Um in California. So California is one of, I think, 20 states that have a minimum wage that's higher than the federal level. In California, um, as of July 1st, it's $9 an hour, and it's scheduled to go up to $10 an hour um, New Year's Day 2016. So another small raise coming. So you, you would uh, hopscotch right over California. Are you looking to get the city council to pass uh, something that would guarantee future increases? Yeah, so here's the so here's what we called for and here's the kind of progression and update. Sure. So starting this spring, I think, is when the camp the grassroots campaign really started bubbling and growing. And we went to city council and we agreed we want the minimum wage to be at least ten fifteen an hour. This is what they did in San Jose and indexed to the cost of indexed to inflation. And what's really exciting is just a few weeks ago they they wrote up an ordinance. City staff wrote up an ordinance, and they're voting on it this October. And it Do is. Do you have a date in October yet? Not that we know of, but we're going to be talking and trying to figure that out. Um, so they're going to vote on this in October, and most most people would like to see it higher than ten fifteen. But that's what the drafted ordinance is right now for Mountain right. View. Did you pick that number because San Jose did it successfully? Um, but not based on any particular cost of living analysis of Mountain View? So there are different numbers that, that come up. Um, 1015 matches San Jose. Uh, that's something that, that makes a lot of people very comfortable. There is kind of a, a, an example, a local example, where that wage has been successful. Um, kind of the higher end of the spectrum, you see cities passing $15 an hour. Um, Seattle kind of led the way with that. Um, and and you're hearing other major cities talking about that as well. Um, just this week, the mayor of Los Angeles um, called for a raise to 13 and a quarter an hour or something like that. Um, MIT uh, publishes a respected living wage calculation that, that puts the hourly wage at around $12 an hour in this area. And so people have some different ideas about what a fair wage would look like. Um, and we're hoping that the, the 10, 15 an hour serves as a baseline for that increase. Right. And it doesn't restrict you from coming back the next year and say, let's make it 12, <laughs> right? We're, so we're hoping that this, uh, this has been a great start to the conversation and has really alerted a lot of people in the community to the, the importance of this issue um, and generated a lot of support. So just like you said, you know, if, if the city council does act um, to raise the wage to, to match San Jose's at this point, um, we plan on continuing the, the drumbeat to make sure that um, newly elected council members, of which there will be three come um, January, continue this, this drive to, to increase the minimum wage. Yeah, with the vote coming in October, it's not really going to be a ballot issue for the people who are running for city council, right? But are you going to yeah. use the election as? Well, it's a hot topic, and um, at the city council candidate forum last week, most of them came out in support of a raise in the wage. That's good. Yeah, so it looks like we have support. There's one candidate, Mercedes Salim, Salim um, who supports, I think she said, tw at least 12 an hour is what she supports. So, you know, if they don't want to pass it this October, I have a lot of hope that if we tried it again next year that this time we would go for 12, yeah. I think. But it's a group, <laughs> it's a group decision. It's a group decision. So what are you doing with your, uh, your campaign, your grassroots effort? Are you going door to door, or what are you doing? How are you getting people, uh, first of all, informed? I'm that glad this, you asked this question. This so the city is putting on a forum next Monday, September 8th, 
at 6.30 p.m. at Mountain View Senior Center. And this is the only meeting where the city is saying we want the public to come and give input. So we want anyone who even supports this a little bit to come out because if we can get this raise, the wage raised here in Mountain View, this is not only really important for our community, but it really sets a precedent that in local communities we can start kind of raising things up. So we have economy that's working for everyone instead of like, you know, you were saying in the rally, yeah. just the 1%. Yeah, it'll work a little bit better for everyone anyway. Mm -hmm. So again, that's uh, Tuesday, uh, this is Tuesday, September 2nd. I'm reading the announcement for this show. Monday, September, September 8th at 6.30 p.m., is it? Mm -hmm. Yes, at the uh, Mountain View Senior Center uh, on Escuela Avenue. Um, this is a good time to give your website, uh, the Facebook page, I guess. Can I give two different websites? Sure. Okay, so the first I, I website... I think we've got the Facebook one to go on the screen. Okay, so let's start with the <laughs> Facebook one then. Uh, um, so the Facebook group. Uh, you can go to Facebook, I think, dot com slash group slash politically inspired. Politically inspired, Politically right. inspired. You could also... I'm not going to give too many websites right now, but if you go to politicallyinspiredaction.org, then you can find all the links to sign up for action alerts to stay up to date with what all the latest events are because we really only have five weeks left until this happens. So we really need anyone in the community who cares about this issue to come out right now. And I would say while you're looking around online about minimum wage increases in Mountain View, the city has actually launched a really exciting um, platform called Open City Hall. And if you search for Mountain View Open City Hall, I'm sure you can find it. Uh, that they want to use going forward to solicit input from the community on issues um, being discussed in council. And they, they compare it to the um, public comments part of their council meetings where um, people can stand up and speak for three minutes. Uh, this is an opportunity to make your voice heard um, from the comfort of your own home. You don't have to go to City Hall. You don't have to sit through anyone else's comments. Um, <laughs> but the response has been really heartening. Um, I think uh, or as of earlier today, there have been over 200 views of the site and, and nearly 60 people have posted comments that they want others to see. Um, some anonymous, but, but many not. And uh, by and large, they're supportive of, of a significant increase in the minimum wage with, again, 10, 15 is kind of a minimum where people are calling for often more than that. So is that one of the things you're doing is encouraging people to use that and- Absolutely. So I think that's a really powerful way to to have an individual voice heard um, kind of can sign on to somebody else's comments, um, but also take the opportunity to, to leave your own and, and people's own individual thoughts about the significance of this, um, this increase on their community. Can I add one more thing on sure. that? Sure. It's mountainview.gov uh, slash open city hall. So if you're watching this, please go online right now <laughs> and, and write something. It's not gonna take too long. And even if you just write, I support this, that's enough. It doesn't have to be long and complicated, but it, it really matters right now that they know that there is huge support for this issue, which there is. So they feel like they can actually have the support of their community in taking this step. Okay, so mountainview.gov slash... It's something, it's, yeah, the Mountain View City website slash Open City Hall. Okay. Um, so I go to politicallyinspiredaction.org and click on the volunteer button. What's going to happen to me? What are you going to put me to work doing? Um, <laughs> well, you'll go come to this forum, you'll sign up, and then we might be going to a city council meeting soon with someone in a turkey suit and some pies for city council. <coughs> Um, what we're saying is we think... I saw you're posting on Facebook looking for a turkey suit. I was wondering what <laughs> that was I found one. About. <laughs> I found a turkey suit. I, I need a bigger fellow to wear it. So. Okay, okay, we don't need to, uh, <laughs> to air any appeals for a turkey suit. But we could program. air appeals for pies. So if anyone wants to bake a pie, go on our website, sign up, and okay. send us an email and bake a pie for City Do Council. Do you want to share the significance of the pie? Why don't you share the significance of the pie? So You had something to do in creating. <laughs> so the, the City um, Council is actually going to be a multi-step process. They are going to have a vote in October, and I'm not completely familiar with the work of the City Government, but it's simply kind of to approve the language, and then there's going to be a subsequent vote on whatever they language they approve. 
Um, and we, before we even knew that they were going to have this timetable, um, we were pushing them to act in time for Thanksgiving. Um, kind of before things get too busy with the end of the year, before this council, um, some of the members term out, we want to see, um, see real action. Um, and we, <laughs> we were trying to connect this to Thanksgiving, uh, and we said that every worker deserves a slice of the pie. A uh, fair slice. A fair slice, slice of the of pie, and we're encouraging our council to act by, by November, the end of November. Ah, so a little visual, and that should get good media coverage. Um, is the Mountain View Voice, the local newspaper, covering this issue, or are you satisfied with the coverage you've gotten in? So we got some great coverage of the rally, the, the clips you showed earlier, and it wasn't just local. We were actually um, kind of beyond Mountain View in the greater Bay Area. We had um, some news crews, and so we were on, um, on TV a couple of times. We had some foreign language newspapers covering us. I think that just speaks to um, how, um, how much support there is more broadly and how much interest there is in this issue right now. Kind of it's a federal issue, but it's really, um, we're making the most progress locally um, with gridlock in Congress. Um, people are just standing up and, and getting, getting their communities to, to pass this necessary increase. Yeah, I wanted to bring that up because it, it's pretty clear that nothing is going to happen uh, in this Congress in terms of a, a minimum wage, no matter how overdue it is at the federal level. Most states, I think, are already beyond the federal level anyway. Um, but we're, we're seeing this kind of thing spring up in town after town all, all across the country. Um, I, I do want to give our audience an opportunity if you have any uh, questions or comments on this. Once again, get your hands up. But let me ask while we're waiting for, to get the microphone um, positioned here. Um, you mentioned that San Jose passed their, uh, their own ordinance to 215. What have they learned from their experience that uh, you can apply to this? Well, I would say the number one they, thing they've learned is it's been going, it works great. Um, Chuck Hammer, who's the owner of Pizza My Heart, found that he was scared, like a lot of businesses in San Jose were, um, and he found business went up in his San Jose restaurant. So there's an article in the Wall Street Journal about it that people can look up. But I think what San, San Jose has taught us is it boosted, I think it pumped $100 million into their local economy. There were maybe 9,000, 4,000 to 9,000 new minimum wage jobs. So it's been hugely New successful. jobs. New, new minimum wage jobs. The, the argument new. is this is a job killer. What are the other arguments against it other than direct experience like that? Like right, this? but I, I think experiences like San Jose really bear out that increase in minimum wage puts more disposable income in the pockets of workers that are going to go spend it. Um, and um, if you're making minimum wage, you're spending everything you earn. This is something people need to get in their heads when we're talking about boosting the economy. Yeah. Um, and, and on a national level, uh, I mean, a national increase would um, produce billions of dollars in increased economic activity. Um, and we see the same effect at a local level. And I think it's just kind of continuing to put forth these examples, whether it's San Jose or Mountain View or San Francisco, which is considering, which has been a leader on this issue, is considering further increases in their wage. Um, eventually, Washington will have to listen. Yeah, let's hope there's some ears <laughs> that are, that are going to be open there. Let's go to the uh, audience question. Well, actually, you're, you've already begun to answer the question that I was going to ask, which is I, I've heard stories like the ones that you've cited that increasing the minimum wage actually makes the local economy stronger and healthier. But in talking to people who might not um, be disposed to believe that or have read the same things that I've read about it, I'm wondering where would I best look for resources, something that I could print out and show them or send them a link? What could I cite as evidence that Mountain View, like San Jose, can well afford to do this and will profit from doing it? Good question. Resources. Uh, PoliticallyInspiredAction.org? Sure. We have links to resources. Okay. PoliticallyInspiredAction.org. And I, it's either, ra yeah, I think RaiseTheMinimumWage.org has even a talking points fact sheet that will go through. Here's what they say. Here's the reality. And, and one thing is this idea, the kind of theoretical debate about the economy, 
there is, you know, you can go back and forth, but really what happens when it's implemented is it seems to work and boost the economy in real life versus theory. And, and you can make the argument that it's not only about jobs. It's about the workers. And nobody who works full time should have to live in poverty. Um, and that's what we're seeing as the number of minimum wage jobs increases uh, in our recovery. Um, people are finding work, but they're finding it at lower wages than they, they had previously. And, and increasing the minimum wage is really an important part of making sure that workers can support themselves um, and that workers can, um, can feed their families and, and can get by without government support. How does the uh, U.S. federal minimum wage compare to other countries? Do you have any information on that? <laughs> Not good. Uh, I think Australia is twice, at least twice our minimum wage. We're, I don't know exactly where we stand, but it's, it's low, so go online and look it up, but we're not doing... Australia, by the way, I think was the first country to uh, institute a, the idea of a minimum wage. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, I think I did that research for the rally that you organized and they asked me to come to, because they, they tried it in one state and it was so popular and so successful. Um, that they extended it to the whole country, and this is back like in 1910 or something. But I also think that's, that's a good example, right, where small demonstrated successes can right. then be spread more broadly. Yeah. Um, and, and you see a lot of that in California and even just in the Bay Area where cities are, are kind of racing each other to the top to see who can uh, set their minimum wage the highest. Yeah, has the $15 wage in Seattle gone into effect yet? Is there... Are there any results from that? We got a yes from the audience. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know um, their exact experience. I knew I was very um, pleasantly surprised when it was adopted. Yeah, that's, that's a big jump. Did we have another question here? Okay, we've got uh, a minute and a half left here, so make quick questions. Yeah, go, go to our first guest. Okay. <laughs> um, yes, I'm the simple fellow again. Yeah. <clears throat> And I've been uh, studying quite a bit about the conservative movement, and I think a conservative who uh, really is enchanted with the free market would say, well, this is a free market situation. If people are receiving $2 an hour, apparently there's enough supply of people that are willing to work for that level. Why should a government have to step in and say, no, no, you must pay $10 an hour? Great, I think great point. Would you pass question. that to the next one? Let's get a quick question, and then we're going to have like a minute to wrap up here. It, it seems to me that with, with the, um, the building success, the momentum that's building across many cities, that, that various cities don't necessarily need to race against each other. What they need to race against is providing a, a living wage, and reframing minimum wage to a living wage emphasizes the needs of people. Got to cut you off? Yep. Announce the uh, next um, town hall or the forum? Yeah. Come next Monday, 6.30 p.m. at Mountain View Senior Center, and tell them what wage you support. Tell next them that you support Monday, a September 8th, support the minimum wage. You've been watching Other Voices, brought to you by Peninsula Peace and Justice Center. We're here live on the first Tuesday of every month. Not sure what we're going to do next month, but there's any number of things to talk about. Join us then. It'll be interesting, I guarantee you. Josh, Megan, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us uh, here in the studio and those of you watching at home and on the internet.